Hi guys, it's Brittany, your local 4-H agent with the McKinley County Cooperative Extension offices. Summer sure got here fast, and with school out for the summer, we have partnered with Gallup Fire on this beautiful day to talk to you a little bit about fire safety. Behind me is a fire engine, and in just a moment, we're going to go to a safety trailer where some experts with Gallup Fire are going to talk to you about fire safety. The thing about fire safety is that it's fun for everyone. We do fire drills at school. At work, we all have emergency action plans, and so it's important that you within the home also have a fire safety and prevention plan. Today, these experts are gonna to talk to you a little bit about the importance of knowing your physical address, how to prevent and what to do in the instance of a house fire, and lastly, you're gonna meet a very special guest. So thanks for joining us, and thank you to Gallup Fire for bringing us this wonderful education. Uh, John Parrott, I'm a fire inspector with the City of Gallup Fire Department. Mike Gleason, fire inspector with the City of Gallup Fire Department. And we're here today to talk to you a little bit about fire prevention and we're going to be using our safety house that the citizens of Gallup have allowed us to have to go out and teach at schools, teach community events about fire safety. Before we go inside and talk about fire safety, a couple of important things that we need to talk about outside of our house. The first one is having address markers that are visible from the road. In the event of an emergency, it's critical that firefighters and police officers and EMS personnel are able to reach your house as quickly as possible. One of the ways we do that is being able to see the address from outside either the street or, or however we're approaching your, your house. So having an address marker either on your mailbox or on your house is critically important for us to be able to find your house as soon as possible. The other thing that we need to talk about outside we have a sign right here that says, in case of emergency, we want to dial 911. Everybody in our house needs to know the number to 911. And it may sound common sense, but in the event of emergency, sometimes people, they're under stress, they get freaked out that there's a fire in their house or there's another emergency, and they forget 911. If it's a medical emergency or a law enforcement emergency, can call 911 from your house. If it's a fire emergency and there's a fire in your house, we really want you to evacuate your house first and then call 911 from either a neighbor's house or a cell phone outside of your house. With modern construction, fires double in size every 60 seconds. So a small fire that you may find in your house can easily progress to a large fire within a matter of minutes. So having people get out of their house as fast as possible to call 911 is critically important and nowadays because a lot of people don't have landlines in their house they use cell phones back in the old days when we used to have phones in our house whenever we would call 911 your address would pop up at our dispatch center now with cell phones that doesn't always happen so we always want everybody in your house to know what their address is not just having it listed on the house or the mailbox but everybody in your house actually knows what their physical address is. So when they call 911 from their cell phone outside of the house, they can tell the dispatchers exactly where this emergency is. All right, so now we're inside of our safety house. Um, inside of our safety house, we have a kitchen set up and we're gonna to talk to you a little about fire safety in the kitchen. But before we get to that, there's a couple of things that are critically important to have in everybody's house. The first one is smoke alarms. And you may not be able to see them because they're up on the ceiling, but this is what a smoke alarm sounds like. All right, so those smoke alarms in our homes let us know that they, there's smoke in our house. Whenever we hear that smoke alarm, we need to be able to start evacuating our house as soon as possible. We already talked about how fires double in size every 60 seconds. So those smoke alarms are critically important, especially at night. Most of the fires that we have happen at night when we're sound asleep. A lot of people think, well, if I'm sound asleep, I'm gonna smell the smoke and it's gonna wake me up. That actually does not happen. Sometimes the smoke can actually put you into a further sleep and make you sleep even harder. These smoke alarms are important because they're loud and they're sometimes annoying, but they're supposed to be that way, that when they see smoke, they alarm and they wake us up and we know that there's smoke somewhere inside of our house so we can safely evacuate. Now, where should smoke alarms go? We always recommend that one is in, inside of every bedroom and then outside of the bedrooms. 
and then one on each floor of your home. If you live in a multi-story house, you should have one on each floor. And people ask, well, why should I have a smoke alarm in my own bedroom? It's because we should sleep with our doors closed at night. A lot of people say, well, I like to have the door open so I can hear things. Remember, a lot of times that fire is going to start somewhere else inside of our house. And that door to your room is a barrier to prevent the smoke from coming into your bedroom and preventing that fire. Your bedroom can actually be survivable space. Even if you have a large fire somewhere else inside of your house, your bedroom could be a place where you could survive. So the reason why we put smoke alarms inside the bedroom and outside the bedroom, when that door's closed, if a fire starts anywhere else, that smoke alarm in the hallway is going to alarm and wake us up. But if we actually have a fire in our bedroom, that smoke alarm that's inside of our room is also gonna activate and wake us up. With smoke alarms, we wanna make sure that we test them at least once a month. So usually on the first of the month, we wanna make sure an adult does this, but they actually hit that, there's a little test button on all smoke alarms that you can use to test it, and it should beep. Or if you're like me, every time I cook, your smoke alarm gets tested. All right? The other thing is we like to change batteries and smoke alarms at least twice a year. We always say whenever we change the clock, uh, time on our clock, we change the batteries in our smoke alarms. Some newer smoke alarms that are out there have batteries that can't be replaced. They're 10 year batteries. Those are great to have, but other smoke alarms still have batteries that we need to replace. We always wanna make sure that we have those batteries in there. Even if our smoke alarms are hardwired into our electrical system, that battery is designed that if the power goes out, the smoke alarm's still gonna work. So in the kitchen here, a couple different areas that are hazards inside the kitchen. The first one is the microwave, all right? Microwaves do cause fires, and we're gonna sh show you about some of the hazards with these, but also how to put out a fire that's in there. The next one is the stove, and then we have a trash can. So with the microwaves, this is a major electrical appliance and almost every house has one. Some of the safety things that we wanna do with microwaves is we don't ever wanna put anything metal in there. And when we're cooking something in there, we wanna make sure that we're monitoring it. This is a, a cooking appliance, just like a stove or an oven. We wanna make sure that we're monitoring whatever we're cooking in there. Whenever these things catch on fire, usually the fire is going to be inside the microwave itself and these things are contained enough to where if there's a fire inside of here we don't ever want to open the door because now that's allowing whatever's happening inside that microwave to come out so if we have a fire inside of a microwave we're going to leave the door closed and we're just going to unplug it if you safely can all right and we're going to show you a fire in this here in a couple minutes so the stove a couple things we want to do especially if we have smaller kids around our house or anybody we want to make sure that whenever we're cooking the handles to our pots are turned in we don't ever want them turned out because you can easily knock it over and it can burn you if there's a small child in the house they may reach up and grab it and it could cause them to get burned so we always want to make sure that the handles on our pots are always turned in to where somebody can't knock it off anytime we're cooking on the stove we want to make sure that we leave spoons away from it, rags, towels, hand cloths, anything that will catch on fire, but make sure that we leave it away from the flame. Also, when we're cooking, we should always have a lid very close by, just in case we have a fire, we could also use the lid to put that fire out. And then we're gonna talk about trash can safety. So trash can, we wanna make sure we're not putting anything extremely hot in there that can catch on fire. We wanna make sure that we're not dumping ashes in there, or if we're cooking something, we put something extremely hot in there. Basically some, some safety things on that. So before we talk about putting out fires in these, the next thing, safety thing we're gonna talk about is fire extinguishers. Just like every home should have a smoke alarm, every home should have a fire extinguisher. Now this is a very big fire extinguisher that we would, that probably most people aren't gonna have in their house, but we wanna make sure that they get appropriately sized fire extinguishers for their house. And we recommend having a fire extinguisher in the kitchen, recommend having a fire extinguisher in the garage if you have one, but also anywhere, any other floor in the home, we wanna make sure we have a fire extinguisher. In a regular home, most of our fire hazards are the kitchen, the garage, and then like fireplaces and, and anything like that where we have to have, have actual fire. So using a fire extinguisher is extremely easy. It's an acronym that we use called PASS, P-A-S-S. -S. And P-A-S-S -S stands for 
First thing we're going to do is pull the pin. So we pull this pin out. Basically, this pin is designed for us to not be able to squeeze the handle and accidentally discharge this fire extinguisher. So we're going to pull the pin. What we're going to do is we're going to take the nozzle and we're going to aim at the very base of the fire. Even though the fire may be big, we don't want to just shoot this fire extinguisher into the flames because that's not what's really burning. Whatever's burning is at the very base of that fire. So we're going to aim this at the very, very base. We're going to squeeze the handle until the agent starts coming out and then we're going to sweep side to side. Now with the fire extinguishers, we want to make sure that we're not too close to the fire because we may actually spread it because there is compressed air that's going to be coming out of this but we don't want to be too far away because we, don't, we want the agent to be able to effectively fight the fire. Also, well, the first time you ever use a fire extinguisher, some people get kind of nervous because they think that the fire is getting bigger. This agent that's in here is a powder, so when it comes out, it almost looks like smoke because it's so fine. We want you to know that that's the fire extinguisher working. So fire extinguishers are designed to put out very, very small fires or to assist us in getting out of our house. If the fire's too big, we would rather have you safely evacuate your house and call 911 so the fire department can get there to put out the fire. Fire extinguishers are just designed for very, very small fires. All right. The other thing with fire extinguishers, if you're using a fire extinguisher and it doesn't seem like the fire is going out, go ahead and evacuate your house and call 911. That's what we're here for. In fact, before you even start using a fire extinguisher, make sure you call 911 because we want to have the firefighters on their way to your house before you start trying to extinguish a fire on your own. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to show you a couple safety tips on how to put out fires in these devices. All right, and this is going to get very, very loud and you might see some smoke because each of these actually have a little bit of smoke that comes out of it. You're also going to hear the smoke alarm and whenever the smoke alarm goes off, I'm actually going to silence it just so you can hear me talking. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have a simulated fire in the microwave. <laughs> and this is what you're going to see. You're going to hear a loud noise. You might start seeing sparking going on inside the microwave. Our smoke alarm is going off because it's sensing smoke. Because that smoke alarm can even <laughs> that smoke alarm can even send smoke that you can't see. Go ahead and shut off the alarm so you can hear it. So remember, a fire in the microwave, we don't ever want to open the door. The only thing we want to do is if you safely can, we're just going to unplug the microwave. Once that microwave is unplugged, the electricity is going to be off to it. And if there's something burning inside, it's still contained inside of that microwave. We still want to call 911 to have the fire department respond. We should grab our fire extinguisher just in case, but basically unplugging that microwave is the safest way to put out a fire inside of a microwave. All right. So with the stove, so the first thing that we're going to do with this, a fire on the stove is if we can, turn off that alarm again. The first thing that we're going to do if we have a fire on the stovetop is we want to turn off the gas. If it's gas, we're going to turn off the gas to the appliance. If it's an electrical stove, we're going to turn off the switches, the electricity to the stove. That's the first thing that we want to do. The next thing we want to do is if we have a lid, we want to <coughs> take a lid and try to cover that, what, that pan that's on fire first. All right, because what we're doing with that lid is just trying to take away the oxygen from that fire. But be careful when you're doing that, we don't want you to burn yourself because this fire may be coming out of the pot and may be burning stuff around it. If the fire is outside of the pan, the lid's not gonna be very effective putting that fire out. Most of the time, the fires that we have on stoves are when people are, they're frying stuff or they have a lot of grease build up on their stove. So that's usually what causes stove fires. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start the fire in the stove, all right? And Fire Inspector Gleason's here is going to actually going to use this fire extinguisher to put out that fire. So what you can see is we have a fire. All right. We have smoke. So I'm going to try to turn off the gas or the electricity to the stove. 
Because of the size of the fire, I can't get close to it to put a lid on it. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab our fire extinguisher while someone's calling 911, and Mike's going to put out this fire. So what you notice what Mike did is he put that fire out and as soon as the fire was out, because I wasn't able to turn off the electricity or the gas to the stove, he went ahead and turned it off. All right. So he stood here and made sure that the fire was out, but he still has a little bit of that fire extinguishing agent needed if that fire was to come back. So what we're going to do now is show you a fire in the trash can. And because of the small space, when we were showing you how to put out the fire in the stove, we weren't able to do that. But whenever we're trying to fight a fire in our house with a fire extinguisher, we always want to make sure that the exit to the house is behind us. We don't ever want the fire to be between us and a door to safety. This fire may not go out. The fire extinguisher may not work. There may be a lot of issues where, the, where we can't get this fire out and we want to make sure that we can still exit the house safely. So we kind of rearranged ourselves and what you're going to see is we're going to have a fire in this trash can. Fire Inspector Gleason is going to use the acronym PASS, remember pull, aim, squeeze and sweep, to use the fire extinguisher to put out this fire but you're going to see that he has the door to the outside to his back so he could safely exit the house if needed. So where are we now? We have a fire in our trash can. We have smoke, so what we're going to do is we want to make sure that people are getting out of the house. Someone's calling 911, but we have somebody grab a fire extinguisher as well. All right. And what you saw Fire Inspector Gleason do is, as he was approaching that fire, he was ready with that fire extinguisher. After he extinguished that fire, he backed up with that fire, wherever the fire was at, still in front of it. We don't ever want to turn our back on a fire because we don't want it to rekindle behind us. So he backed out, the fire was extinguished, but because of the smoke, he wants to be able to get out of the house safely. Right? In fires, the thing that's the most dangerous is not the actual fire itself to us, it's the smoke. The smoke that's being produced by the things that burn in our house is very, very toxic. So the fire may not harm us, it's going to damage the building, but the smoke is really, really what's bad for us. So we want to make sure that we're not breathing the smoke in. Any, you've always heard that we want to crawl low on your smoke. Remember, in a fire, the fire is bad, but the smoke is what really, really hurts us. So right now, we're in our room, and you can tell that we have smoke in here. And whenever there's a fire in our house, that smoke is going to rise up to the ceiling because it's hot and closer to the ground is gonna be nice, cool, clean air. So if we ever wake up in the middle of the night and we see smoke in our house, we wanna make sure that we get as low as we can to the floor because we can see that there's nice, clean air. But now we need to get out of our house. So anytime we come to a door, the first thing that we wanna do is fill the door for heat because we wanna make sure that there's not a fire behind here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the back of our hand and we're gonna start filling the door for the bottle we're going to work our way to the top. If this door is extremely hot, we know that there's a fire behind this door and we don't want to open it because now all that stuff is going to come into this room. But if I fill this door and it's nice and cool, I'm going to slowly open it. Remember, there may be smoke behind there, but we want to make sure that there's not a fire behind there. And we're going to crawl low and we're going to get out of the house. So. I open the door, I can see that there's not a fire, it's not real smoky, so I'm gonna go ahead and get as low as I can and I'm gonna crawl out of the house, making sure that the door closes behind me. So a couple things that we wanna cover, this, this goes for anybody, but really for the smaller citizens, the younger citizens in our area, the first one is stop, drop, and roll. And anytime you hear fire prevention, we always talk about stop, drop, and roll. Stop, drop, and roll is designed if your clothes ever catch on fire. 
We always want to make sure that we're away from any fire and our clothes aren't going to catch on fire. But if they do, the first thing that we want to do is stop where we're at, as long as it's in a safe place. Because the more we run around, the fire is just going to get bigger on our clothes. So the first thing we're going to do is stop. We're going to get up to the floor, we're going to cover our face, and we're going to roll back and forth until the fire is out on our clothes. So stop, drop, and roll. It's very easy to try, very easy to practice. Hopefully it's something we never use, but we only use that when we're close. The other thing that we want to talk about is having two ways out of every room in our house. So whenever there's a fire in our house, having people get out is extremely important. We want to make sure that the people are out evacuating the house. So out of every room in our house, we should always have two ways of getting out. It may be to the door to the outside, it may be a window. If we have to use a window, we want to make sure that we work with our parents to figure out how do we open the window and get out, but we always want to practice those. Just like in school, we do fire drills in schools, we should always do fire drills at our homes because fires happen in our homes a lot more than they happen anywhere else. So especially for the younger kids, you guys are the fire drill experts because your parents are working, they're busy doing all this other stuff. You go through these fire drills at school, so we want you to go back to the parents or the adults in your home and actually practice fire drills at your own house. And if you ever have any questions, contact your local fire department and any fire prevention office or any fire department would be more than happy to assist you in anything that we do. As a fire department, that is our primary goal is the safety of our citizens and the visitors to our community. We would rather prevent fires than having to put a fire out after it starts. So anytime you see fire prevention, and you can see right behind me, you always hear about Sparky. So Sparky is a fire dog, and we have a picture here, but I have a very special guest for you today. Whenever we have we go to schools, a lot of times people get scared of Sparky because Sparky's a big dog. He's just a big dog. He's a big puppy. And he's our very own special firefighter dog. So I'm going to introduce you to Sparky. So this is Sparky, and just like any other dog, Sparky doesn't talk because our dogs don't talk. Sometimes he'll bark, but we take Sparky whenever we go to schools because we want to introduce Sparky to kids. There's no reason to be afraid of Sparky. He's just a big, big puppy. So this is our Sparky here in Gallup. He sleeps at the fire station with us, just like all the rest of the firefighters do. But sometimes when you're around town, you might see Sparky out there. 